Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and today I'm here again for another review of one pen that I received as a loan from Apubum. So, thank you Joost for sending me this pen for review and let's look at it. The pen that I have here is the Pinider La Grande Bellezza Blackstone. La Grande Bellezza means the big beauty. The pen comes inside this beautiful box, cardboard sleeve. This beautiful box is made of a blackish color. It has the Pinider crest and logo there. And you open it, the same logo here with the here, the crest and the pin either and Firenze 19, 1774 sorry and it comes with instructions and warranty and here it comes with some paper and envelopes it's like a mini portable desk and let's take the pen out and look at it and so the Pinaider La Grande Beleza is a pen that is made uh, with a very interesting uh, concept. Let me change the light a little bit. This pen has um, a black body, but it's not a deep black. It's more kind of a greyish black color. The pen has this shape that it's quite hard for me to describe. It's mostly cylindrical, but it narrows down a little bit on the end and another little bit on the other end of the cap. It has a central broader band on the cap. And let's take a look at the top of the cap. There is pin either. Then you have the clip that is kind of a quill reminding us of the older writing instruments and you can see this is very very flexible it is spring loaded so very easy to use on the band on the cap there it has this kind of frosted surface and it has pin either and on the other side it has an engraving a phrase that i'm not sure or a sentence i'm not sure you can read it uh, looking through the camera I can't read it but what's written there is the quick brown uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog that's our usual phrase that we use for reviews and there you have just the shiny surface on the other side the cap of this pen is a slip fit but not because uh, it has something that catches inside it it has a magnet so it is very nice to work with and the same way you take the cap out with a magnet or you put the cap on you can also post the cap with also a magnet so it is quite a uh, quite nice feeling the cap is quite heavy, the pen, it has a, the resin is not, this is made of resin, it's not very heavy, but the section is, and the section is made completely of metal, and you have this interesting nib, and now I will just zoom in a little bit to show you the nib, and here you have the nib, the nib has some engravings it has a like a keyhole shaped breather hole it has an interesting thing the slit of the nib i'm not sure you can really see it the slit of the nib does not go all the way into the breather hole then you have the pin either crest there Below there is pin either, and beneath the pin either there is B from broad nib. And then it says quill nib, 14 carat, 5 
8 5 which is the same thing as 14 karat gold so this is a nib made of gold and it has it is this kind of a quill nib that has these cut outs on the sides to make it more flexible however i found that this broad nib is not actually a flexible nib but the nib has this interesting uh, shape it has a plastic sec uh, feet and that's it the pen is quite heavy in this part the the section where you hold the pen is made of very polished metal but if your fingers will slip a little i don't feel they will but if you have slippery fingers they will rest on this part that is raised from the rest of the section and it also has these texture so your fingers will not slip from there and the barrel unscrews and you have a pin either international uh, converter so you can use these with international cartridges or converters now about the the writing experience uh, i have to say that the pen is quite comfortable to hold and it's comfortable to hold like this without being posted it is long enough it is uh, it is well balanced the weight is all on the section so it will point the nib down and i find it very comfortable to hold like that if you prefer you can post the pen it is possible it posts securely it has that magnet but i feel it becomes back heavy so i don't really like it about the price of this pen this pen costs around 400 euros so it's not an inexpensive pen by any means but it is an italian pen with an italian design made by an italian master of fountain pens which is uh, dante del vecchio so you are also paying for that about the comparison of sizes you have here a parker centennial do fold the big red that i almost always show and also the lami safari candy violet and you may see that the pin either has a comparable size it is very comparable with the parker do fold and they even have the same sizes of uh, thickness of the barrel and th they are very similar in size not in style they are quite different pens but they have the same kind of style and when you compare it with the lamy safari this is the, the comparison you get the the pin either is just a little bit shorter but not that much so i think this is quite comparable it has a very nice size it is well balanced it is well made so it is an interesting pen personally i would never go for a broad nib but this one was the one that i got for review and although i don't i'm not crazy about broad nibs if this was a fine nib i think it would be a very interesting pen and I guess many of my viewers will enjoy this nib because many people like really broad nibs. So now let's go to the writing sample. And here we have pen and paper and let's start. And so this is the... It wasn't kept when I was showing it to you, so it's kept the first time, but it usually doesn't do it. This is the Pinider La Grande Bellezza. This has a broad gold nib. Gold nib. The ink inside is Robert Oster deep sea and the paper is the rhodia dot pad and what can you see right away first this pen 
of it skipped because it was unkept while I was showing to you, but it usually doesn't skip. But it has a enormous ink flow. That's something that I think you can see there. And let's see how it writes. First, this is too broad for my taste. It is a very nice uh, smooth pen. Just a little hint of feedback, but very, very small. And I would say that this pen has some stub like characteristics. It is not a stub, it is a broad nib, but you can see that the horizontal lines are less marked than the vertical lines. Something else. The pen will skip sometimes in my hands because it is a little bit stubbish. If you rotate it, it will not write as well and I never can find the right angle for writing with stubs, but that's me, not the pen. So, this is too broad for me because if I have my natural writing size, I would too broad for me. This is really too broad, I would need a fine nib. But if you like broad nibs and if you like to show off the shadings of an ink, I think this pen is quite good for that. About line variation, that's something that is interesting also. Because this pen has those cutouts to be more flexible in this nib. And as you may see, there is no line variation in this pen. And I think it happens because it is a broad nib and it also has some stub characteristics and you usually can't have line variation with stubs except for the angle you are writing with. If you write in horizontal it is thinner, when you write vertical it is broader. That's it. So, the pen is really good. On the upside down it writes like a stub also. And I would not say it is much finer, it just has less ink flow when you write in reverse. But that's it. The nib feels, has not a lot of line variation, but the nib feels somehow soft and bouncy when you write with it. So it is quite comfortable, I would say I would be interested in trying this pen maybe with an F nib just to check how it performs, but this broad nib will be very good for people who love big nibs and that love to, to show off the ink characteristics. I'm not that kind of person. About the wetness, this is quite a wet pen and it's obvious, it puts a lot of ink on paper. And so, as I told you, the writing with this pen is quite good. There you may find sometimes that I don't hit the paper with the right angle, but that's me. I don't really like this kind of uh, stub nibs. And you may see that the nib is not a perfect ball. At least I was trying to show that to you. It has this stub look to it. So, that is why you need to hit the paper in the right angle. And this is all that I had to show you today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Mr. Appleboom, for sending me such a nice and expensive pen that I wouldn't buy otherwise. Uh, 
just for review, this was very, very helpful. I really enjoyed the quality, but then you get to the point where you think, is that worth 400 euros? That's a question of design originality. And maybe you want to have a pen that was created by Dante Del Vecchio that has this kind of crazy designs. So, I'm very happy to try this pen. I would say this is not really the kind of pen for me. I think I prefer somehow simpler pens without this nib, broad nib. I don't, I'm not, I'm no good for broad nibs, but I would enjoy to try this in F or EF. I think it may, might be a very good option. So, if you want a pen like this, you can go over to Mr. Up to Apple Boom website. Thank you, Yost, for sending me the pen. Thank you all for watching these videos. I hope this review was useful for you. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.